students. Jonathan Edwards, the 18th century American preacher, once claimed that the road to hell is paved with the skulls of unbaptized babies. This begs the question, with what skulls are paved the roads we travel every day? The simple answer is this, the hybrid 3 50th percentile male. This is the inhuman moniker used in the automobile testing industry to refer to the expensive mannequins which are subjected to a broad array of tortures in order to ensure public safety on the highways and byways of the quote-unquote developed world. By what means does the 50th percentile male ensure the protection of motorists? Surely it's a rational method of scientific inquiry. Surely. But then, there are some peculiarities in this particular field of investigation. Wikipedia states outright that the most modern of child crash test dummies do not provide the same physical outcome a human would encounter. The entire cycle of fine-tuning these instruments is suspicious. Crash test dummies and their related medical mannequins have gone through many major iterations over the years, evolving through Sierra Sam, the VIP-50, Sierra Stan, the Hybrid 1, 2, and 3, the BioRid, Sid, Weaman, and most recently, Fagoa, Krabby, and Thor. Every generation promises better results, but the ultimate process of creation is deeply flawed. The dummy is built, data obtained, and safety designs deployed. But that data is then disproven by real-world results, and a new dummy is designed to more closely fit the real-world data. Did you catch the trick there? The dummy is marketed as predictive, but is in fact responsive. The useful data come from real-world crash analyses, and not from lab-controlled crash tests. Moreover, certain testing procedures have extremely little to do with their purported purpose. For example, dummies are frequently decapitated and their heads subjected to dropping. This supposed calibration correlates to nothing about real-life crashes. The velocities are completely unrealistic for automobiles. It is merely grotesque spectacle. Nor was this the first or most grotesque spectacle in the development of the highway safety protocols. As recently as 1989, human corpses were being strapped into cars which were then rocketed toward each other, and the results then analyzed. Unsurprisingly, the diagnosis was the same in each case. Dead. And it's not only corpses. Live chimpanzees, pigs, and bears were sacrificed in the name of science. Or was it some other name? The men spearheading this research did seem to derive certain of their methodological instincts from magical procedures. The grandfather of this discipline insisted on subjecting himself to the self-inflicted harms that were otherwise reserved for animals and non-living persons. Lawrence Patrick was the research director at Wayne State University's Biomechanics Research Lab from the 1940s through the 1970s, at which time he became a vice president at Ford. He crashed himself into walls on a rocket sled, slammed his knees repeatedly with metal bars, and pounded his own chest with a 22-pound pendulum regularly for 15 years. This sort of activity is reminiscent of a process described in Ariel Gluckluck's book, Sacred Pain, Hurting the Body for the Sake of the Soul. The author describes the cross-cultural belief that self-scourging magnifies one's spiritual power. This ascetic master's prime pupil, Harold Mertz, developed the hybrid 3 50th percentile male crash test dummy, which eventually achieved both American and European dominance in its field. The other principal development personality was Samuel Alderson. The scientist had a mentor no less prestigious than J. Robert Oppenheimer, the presiding scientist over the atomic bomb, who is included in every modern book of quotes for this famous utterance of thanatic theurgy. I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Samuel Alderson, his pupil, invented the first crash test to dummy and is notable for creating medical phantoms. These were pieces of real human flesh and bone wrapped in plastic and senses. They bring to mind the reliquaries of the Catholics, expensive sculptures of gold and silver which made homes for the remains of saints and were said to have magically protective powers over anyone who came in contact with them. This link between medical phantoms and reliquaries suggests another interesting point. While in the Middle Ages the most costly things were artisan-forged precious metals and stones, in this new millennium it is machine-etched silicone 
and weirdly formulated plastics. A fully instrumentated hybrid 3 50th percentile male costs well over $100,000. It is the golden calf of our time. Changes in research methods have correlated to an interesting response in death rates from automobile crashes. Cadaver experimentation began in the 30s and seems to have leveled off the rapidly rising death toll of these machines. The transition to predominantly live animals in the 50s doesn't seem to have much of an effect one way or the other, beyond keeping the rates stable. It isn't until the 70s and the hybrid 3 that the death rate really starts declining. It is as though the community were groping toward the most human thing. As they got closer to it, the deaths started declining. So what is it about the hybrid three that makes it more human than corpses and living animals? I believe, my students, it is that it feels. The hybrid three has 58 data channels that record more than 30,000 data points during a tenth of a second crash. This is a likeness not only like a statue of human bone and skin, but of the human nervous system. This similarity, of course, is not valuable in testing. It does not proactively respond like a human with a functioning two-way nervous system would. It is a technology that models the behavior of a completely paralyzed but perfectly sensing human person undergoing sudden catastrophic trauma. It is a step up from Lawrence Patrick's voluntary submission to the scourging. He, after all, would draw the line somewhere. So why go through the decades-long project costing billions of dollars of creating an army of extremely precious feeling mannequins if, as we laid out earlier, the scientific process of using these instruments is a self-circular fraud? It seems to be an essentially magical solution. But to what magical problem? In my next video, I'll answer some of these questions by examining the peculiar circumstances around the very first death by automobile in this world. Until next time, may the pyramid's eye watch over us all.